Namaste and good morning to all of you. Let's start today's class with Vedic prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat, Parbrahma, Tasme Shri, Guru Venamaha, Om Bho Bhavaswaha, Tatsa Vitra Vare Nayam, Bargo Deva Sedi Mahi, Dio Yonaha Prachodaya. Astoma Satgamya, Tamsoma Jyotir Gamya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamya, Om Sehna Vavutu, Sehna Bhunaktu, Seviriyam Karvavahi, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamastu, Ma Vidvi Shavahi, Om Shanti 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 Om. I've been promising you for the last few weeks that I'll go over the Shatkaram. As you know, there are two branches of yoga, Hat Yoga and Raj Yoga. And in Hat Yoga, the very first step, even though there are seven steps on Hat Yoga and eight steps on Raj Yoga, Hat Yoga has a seven steps. And the first step is Shatkaram. And that is what we are going to talk about today. These are the techniques of cleansing and exercising the body to keep it in a good health. Cleansing mainly, but exercising also internal body. Because ultimately we have to detach, learn how to detach from this body while we are in the body and detach from the mind also while we are in this body and we have this mind, but mind can be detached from the body only if the body is healthy. If the body is sick, our mind cannot be detached from this. So our great yogis, they knew that. So that's why they gave us these techniques. These techniques are curative as well as preventive. Some of these techniques, Kriyas, we do it every day. Some we do it weekly. Some maybe once in every three months. Okay. So, and some we can do it more than once a day too. So we got to see what are we doing? Why are we doing them? What are the benefits? And who is not supposed to do it? First of all, this word heart. This is a Sanskrit word, two syllables, ha and tha. Literal meaning of ha is sun, and the tha means moon, sun and the moon. And these are related to two nerve sides of our body, two nadis. Okay, Chandra nadi and the Surya Nadi, which are connected to the left and the right nostrils. And when we do the pranayama also, the prana flow through our nadis. So we should, we need to know what are we doing. This house of ours, which we call body, is it in our control? Is it clean or not? So just like an outer house, we want to make sure, is it clean or not? We want to know where the things are kept. What are those particular rooms we use for? The same thing with this body also. Okay. So shat karam. Shat means six. So karam over here means the kriyas, the techniques. Okay. First of all, let me just go over the seven steps on this ladder of Hatha Yoga. Shatkaram, six practices for cleaning the body. Asana, the postures, that is to strengthen this body. Mudras, those are for stability. Physical stability and the mental stability, mudras. 
fourth step on this hat yoga is pranayama controlled breathing that is for the lightness because after doing pranayama you feel light like a buoyancy feeling then pratyahar pratyahar ultimately even though it is the control over your senses but it gives you firmness and calmness pratyahar a person who practices pratyahar is calm no matter what happens in the outer world so pratyahar it takes your mind inward inward and dhyan the meditation with the dhyan you have a clear perception of the self and ultimately the seventh step is samadhi that is for the supreme bliss let me repeat it again shat karam cleanses the body asans strengthens the body mudras give us stability pranayama for lightness pratyahar for firmness and calmness dhyan for the perception of the self samadhi for supreme bliss now today's talk is about shatkaram the very first step on this ladder of hat yoga yoga starts with that at most importance to keep this body clean number 1 is neti step number 2 is dhoti step number 3 is noli n a u l i noli step 4 is basti b a s t i five is called taratak t r a t a k a taratak number 6 is kapal bhati these are the six practices where the internal cleansing of the whole body we can keep and while keeping it clean what happens we are making this body healthy we stay away from diseases because the root cause of any disease is the excessive waste matter collected okay so yogis they say keep on washing it we wash outside of the body but this is washing of inside also and it's all used what do we use to wash it see there are three things which can really wash anything one is water the other one is air and the third one is fire fire can also get rid of the impurities so mainly we use three things but there are some other things also we use yogis have given us techniques so that we can further remove the impurities inside us okay so neti cleanses the nose nasal passage and it helps all the organs above the shoulders eyes ears nose our brain it helps it all second one i told you dhoti we are washing dhoti dhoti means dhona washing we are washing the internal organs of the body basti we clean our colon and our anus noli we are strengthening our intestines tratak we clean our eyes kapal bhati we clean our head skull 
okay it purifies our lungs also blood also but main emphasis on the head let's start with the start the class with the neti today so this is only a lecture class if you want to learn any of these techniques find a yoga teacher who is practicing these okay don't try to do these exercises just watching the tv learn it from personally learn it from a experienced teacher and if you live in the chicago land area you can come to the ashram come to the ashram will teach you how to do this okay so neti there are several kinds of netis jal neti jal means water then there is a sutra neti i have a specimen for you if you can see it this is a twist it thread and this is thick and you floss your nasal passage with this sutra neti where do you get it again if you come to the ashram i can give it to you i have several of them i bring them from india okay so you just take it from i'll i'll tell you how to do it but first let me give you the names so jal neti sutra neti then there's a rubber neti this is a it's like a catheter okay so you put it again floss it your nasal passage and it comes in different thickness you start with a thin one this is the thinnest i have then it goes little thicker then thicker okay so and there are in between other salts so so whatever you start with always start with a thin one and then floss it okay so rubber neti then there is a milk neti also which is called dugd neti grit neti so with the ghee clarified butter okay so how do we do jal neti i'm sure some of you are already doing it you take a glass of warm water put a little bit salt in there and then just either take it from one nostril or from both at the same time so you're drinking from the nose so you're inhaling the water and either you can drink it or you can hold it in the mouth and spit it out jal neti make sure the water is warm and salt is in there what does it do for you so i told you that neti helps all the organs above your shoulders your eyes your nose so your senses they become better your thinking becomes better if you have a headache or migraine you will see the reduction in it cough cold all those ailments you will see the relief in them okay so jal neti when to do it in the morning right after brushing your teeth you can do it but you can do it in the evening also if you need to because it does not involve your stomach it's only the nasal passage you are cleaning some people use the pot sure you can use that also but that is less effective using the glass you apply a gentle force and all your minor tissues you will see the activation in there the mucus it just salty water it loosens the mucus and washes it you breathe much better so before pranayam it's very important to, to do jal neti anybody should do it okay and then after jal neti if you have practiced that for some time then you can move on to the rubber neti rubber neti you just the, the one side is closed the other side is little flared up open so the closed side you put it from one nostril and then you feel it in the throat you put these two fingers in there catch it 
and then do a little a, a rubbing of your nasal passage and take it out from the mouth. Then you do the same thing on the other side. Okay? So, Ravad Neti. And the Sutra Neti is done the same way. Sutra Neti is more difficult. Ravad Neti, because this Ravad is smooth, it will go, go in there very easily. And if you have started practicing, you start with the Jal Neti, but when you do this, you do this first and then the Jal Neti. It's almost like cleaning the water with a brush and then flushing it with the water. But I wouldn't recommend this right away. First, just do the Jal Neti for a few weeks. Okay, and then after practicing this, then move to this Ravad Neti. And why do we do Dugd Neti and the Ghrit Neti? These three netis I just mentioned, with the help of this kriya, you are cleaning your body. With the dugd neti and grit neti, you are strengthening your nervous system. So dugd neti, all you do is take warm milk and drink it through your nose. Somebody might say that we drink milk through the mouth anyway. Why through the nose? When you drink from the mouth, it's from the mouth, the esophagus, it goes into your stomach. Sure, there's a benefit to that, but when you drink through the nose, it's touching all those small, minor tissues. It strengthens the nervous system. Your ira nadi, pingla nadi, they both get the benefit from the nutrients of the milk. Somebody might say that these days people are lactose intolerant. What should they do? Just spit it out from the mouth. It's not going in your stomach. You are still getting the benefit of it. Gritneti for the same reason. To strengthen your nervous system. If you don't want to drink ghee, liquid ghee, just add that into the milk. See the benefit of it extremely good way to strengthen and the whole our bodily structure is dependent upon the health of our nervous system. To keep our nervous system healthy, these techniques, the yogi gurus, they have given to us. Now let's move on to the dhotis. Oh, before I move on to dhoti, there is another technique which is a little reversal of the jalneti, which is called gajkarne. That's also part of it, gajkarne. This is called a shit kram jalneti also. What you do is instead of drinking water or inhaling water through the nose, you inhale water from the mouth, bend down and get the water out of your nose. So first you inhale from the nose and exhale from the mouth. Now you inhale from the mouth Exhale from the nose, gaj karne. Yogis learned it from elephants. Gaj means elephant. So it's a reverse, reverse. And then you have to apply little pressure. And that's how you get more benefit in your sense organs. Okay, whether eyes or ears or the nose. Okay, so it's like a upward pressure of the water it has a very healthier effect on the sinuses and the eyes. Okay, because you're holding it in the mouth and then exhaling from the nose by bending down. It takes little practice. So first practice Jal Neti and then right after the Jal Neti, just leave some water and do the Gajkarni also. So you will see that you are exerting some force and you need to put some pressure and that helps you. Now let's move on to the dhoti. How many kinds of dhotis? 12 kinds. Divided into three categories. What are the three categories? Or four categories? Antar dhoti, dant dhoti. Antar means inner. Dant means the teeth. Harit dhoti. H R I D, Harid Dhoti, and Mool Shodhan. 
Mool is the root. So antar dhoti, there are four kinds of antar dhotis. Vat sar, vat means the air. Vat sar. Vari sar. Vari means water. So you wash your internal body with the air or with the water. Or vahani sar. Vahani means fire or heat. You produce the heat inside your body. And bahiskrit. That's a blowing out. Bahishkrit. B-A-H-I-S-H-K-R-I-T-A. Bahishkrit. So these are called antar dhoti or internal cleaning and four divisions of that. Then dant dhoti. That also has four divisions, four kinds. Dant mool dhoti, teeth cleaning. See our rishis in the Vedic time also, they knew the importance of keeping the teeth clean. Datun. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. Right? Neem Datun. Jiva Mool Dhoti. Jiva Mool means the tongue. Need to make sure that our tongue is fully cleansed too. Then Karan Randra Dhoti. Ear duct cleaning. And Kapal Randra Dhoti. That is the head passage cleaning also. So dant mool dhoti, jiva mool dhoti, karn randar dhoti, and kapal randar dhoti. Okay, they come under the dant dhoti, the dental cleaning. Then the third categories of dhoti is harid dhoti. And this also has four categories. Dand dhoti. Dand means a stalk. Okay. It's like a wooden stalk. This is like a, a, a like a, a neem datun, little thicker than that, and you clean internal part of you. Woman dhoti. Washing of stomach with water. Woman. Vastra dhoti. Vastra means a piece of cloth. And I have a example of that also for you here. See, it's a very thin muslin cotton cloth. You wet it, put it on your tongue, try to take it inside with the help of the water. How much? as much as you want. But make sure that last part, you leave it out. Then slowly you pull it out. So your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, the whole thing gets cleaned with this cloth. Okay, Vastra Dhoti. And again, remember, learn it from some person who is doing it. Don't try doing it by yourself. The Vastra has to be, if you can see how thin this piece is, so cotton, 100% cotton, but very, very thin. Okay. And where do you get it? Again, I have it at the ashram. Okay. Just don't go to a cloth store and ask for uh, a thin uh, piece of cloth. So it has to be the right kind. So Vastra Dhoti and then Mool Shodhan Dhoti. Mool Shodhan is cleaning the inner spot. Okay. So these are the types of the dhotis, but uh, are most commonly practiced are the woman, which you can do it every day. How do you do the woman? You just drink two or three glasses of water. It could be lukewarm water. And if you stay constipated, you can add some salt in there. Otherwise, plain water is fine. And then early in the morning, without eating or drinking anything, just first thing you do this, right after you're brushing your teeth, 
then you spit it out. It's not a vomit. It's wash. Vomit is when there's a undigested food is there. In the morning, there's no food in there. This is the clean water will come out. This washes the stomach, washes the esophagus. Anybody who has some acidity problem, you'll see that that helps. If you have a digestive problem, it will help. If you have any kind of a skin problem, eczema, or uh, uh, even the pimples, you will see that this kind of a dhoti helps. So I would say this woman dhoti, anybody can do it. I do it personally every single day. So a couple of netis, either a rubber neti, sutra neti, jal neti, gaj karni, and woman dhoti. Okay. So if you want to learn any other, like uh, 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 vat sar, what do you do in vat sar? You inhale air from the mouth. Close your mouth. Feel that air inside. Then take it out. Do it 10 times. Then take a little break. Then do it again. You will feel the cleansing effect in your esophagus, in your stomach also. What, sir? And wari sar. Wari sar is called shankarchalan also. That is a little longer process. So we don't do it every day. That should be done. If there is some kind of ailment, arthritis, uh, or uh, uh, diabetes, then it's recommended every month. Otherwise, for a healthy body, once in every quarter is fine. You just drink a lot of water, go to the bathroom, drink more water, go to the bathroom, and clean your intestines. The clean water which you are drinking from the mouth, after doing this cleaning process for about 45 minutes or so, you will see from the other end, the clean water is coming out. So not just your esophagus and the stomach has been cleansed with water, and there's no salt. If you want to put a little bit of salt, but if you don't want to put too much salt, that's fine too. But with the salt, cleansing happens a little better. So, and then intestines. And we know how long our intestines are. They all get washed, including the colon. Okay, so very, uh, and again, don't start doing it at home by yourself. If you want to do it, come to the ashram. And for that, there's a little uh, preparatory things to be done the night before. Okay, so simple, but uh, uh, just come over here and do it, spend what, two, three hours, and then I'll tell you what to eat, what not to eat after that. Okay, so vat sar, vari sar. Vahani sar. Vahani is uh, creating the heat. What do you do? Two, two ways you can do it. You just squeeze the stomach in and relax it out. Squeeze it in, relax it out. Squeeze it in, relax it out. That's how you do it. This is a first process. Create, you will see that there is a, some heat generated inside your body. So do like a 10, 15 times like this, <clears throat> in and out, in and out, in and out, and take some rest and then again do it. So do like a, three rounds of it and feel the heat. And then after that, you can synchronize with your breathing also. When you are squeezing your stomach in, exhale. When you're bringing it out, inhale. So this is the second way of doing this Agnisar. It's called Agnisar or Vahnisar, the two names for it. And Antar Dhoti, this is fourth kind I told you. Bahishkrit is like a blowing out. So you are inhaling from the mouth. You are taking the air in. Like that. Few rounds of it, you will feel there is a some cleansing happened. And Dant Dhoti is you are already cleaning your teeth with a brush. In old times, they did it in with a datan. Then I'm sure you are cleaning your tongues also. Karan Randra Dhoti. 
How do you do that? So with the thumb, you are supposed to just inside, clean inside with the thumb. Take your thumb inside and clean as deep as you can go. Okay, you will see that there's a sticky mucus which will come out and then wash your mouth after that. And then Harid Dhoti, the stock, I, I have never done it, but uh, uh, I'm sure the yogis in the old times, they just took that little dand and they cleansed their throat with that. And woman we already talked about, Vastar Dhoti we talked about, Mool Shodhan Dhoti. So it's just like a, your anal opening. In India, you know, we used to clean ourselves with water. Over here we came, everybody is using the paper towels now, or the Kleenex and the tissue papers. But uh, when we take shower, we can do that. Make sure with, with the, uh, one finger, clean the inside of your anal opening too. Okay, so this is what the yogis, they said do it. So dhotis, so neti dhoti. Then after that, uh, noli. Noli is a practice. Uh, first, we got to do the udyan band. And you are all familiar with the bands. Mool band, udyan band, and jalandar band. So have a practice of uh, good udyan band first. So that means uh, just keeping your stomach in for a longer period of time. Then after that, you, you will learn how to move your stomach right and the left. So this is uh, normally the young people do it. I don't practice it, but uh, you can always go on the internet and find out how it's done too, because I'll have to just pull my show it up and show it to you how to do it and I don't feel that there's a need for it. I don't think anybody going to do it but Nolly is the movement of your stomach. Okay, left and right. Right and left like that. Just movement of it. Now next one is Basti. Basti is a it should be done in a Utkatasana. Utkatasana is like a very low chair you are sitting on. It can be done two ways. One is sitting in the water. The second one is called a sathal basti, just with the water, with the, with the air. So with the water, what you do is you squeeze the water in. See, we are used to drinking the water from the mouth. This is squeezing the water in from your anal opening and then expelling it out. But we don't have that kind of a control on our colon. So that's why yogis, they say you can put a tube also so that water is expelled easily inside. But how do you do the sthal basti without water, with the air? That is called, see, if you know how to sit in the Paschimottanasana, legs in the front, hold your toes, and then do the Ashwini mudra. We have talked about Ashwini mudra in the beginning of these classes. So you squeeze your inner muscles and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. So this way you just make your colon clean also and it functions better also. Okay, so that's called a sathal basti. Then tratak. Tratak is eye cleansing. It's an excellent exercise to clean your eye. You draw like a, this size circle, not a, just a small dot, but a circle with a black, just a, a, a fill it up with a black marker. Put it on a piece of paper. Put that piece of paper on the wall. Sit about two feet away, two or three feet away from the wall. And it has to be at the same height as your eyes and keep looking at that circle. Don't blink. Pretty soon what will happen, your eyes will, you will see the tears rolling down. That's how you clean your eyes. Okay. So back straight, shoulders relaxed, keep looking at that dot until the tears roll down. 
Okay. Another way you can do it, the way we do it in our class, that is like a shorter thratak we do. Eyes half open, look at the tip of your nose. Tip of your nose. Then you will see that if you do it for a long enough time, tears will roll down too. But make sure that after that you close your eyes and relax because you have strained your eye muscles. You want to give a soothing effect to the eye muscles. Okay, so that is Dratak. And the sixth one is Kapal Bhati. Again, Kapal means head and the Bhati is to shine. This can be done standing up or sitting down. It can be done fast or it can be done slow. But make sure that your exhalation is twice as long as the inhalation. Okay, so it's like a forceful and complete, very active exhalation. Okay, so it's like a lot of force on the exhalation. So you can do it one side at a time if you want to. And we normally practice it in our classes. Kapal, Bhati. Your body stays still. Okay, you're not moving your body back and forth. And your attention should be right in the forehead or in the head, not in the lungs area. When we do the pranayam, we keep our attention towards the lungs and the heart. But when we do Kapal Bhati, our attention is right over here. Because there's a waste matter being produced in every part of our body, including our head also. So we want to make sure that there is a proper cleansing of the head too. Okay. And standing up, when do we do the standing up? Right after doing a neti. When we blow that water out, that is a Kapal Bhati too. But then we sit down and we are doing our pranayams. After that, we do Kapal Bhati also. Okay. So it goes like this. Like that. It should be done like a 10 puffs, take a little break. 10 more puffs, take a little break. That's how it's supposed to be done in the beginning. Make sure that each exhalation is very strong. If the exhalation is becoming very weak, that means time to stop. It has to be forceful exhalation. Okay. So let's stop it here. And I just want to make sure that I have enough time to answer your questions also. So let me just do the Shanti Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnam Idam Purnat Purnam Udachate Purnase Purnamadai Purnam Eva Visheshate Om Shanti 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 Om.